everyone, it's Nick here from Notero. Today I'm going to be talking to you about clinical note templates, how to create them and how to use them in the system. The very first thing we're going to do is click on our gear or settings icon and we are going to select templates. And as you can see, I'm in this section already for the clinical note templates. I have three created. If you're brand new to Notero, we will start you off with a Notero clinical note template, which you can edit. I have two other um, clinical note templates here. One is in use, meaning that you hover over it says a clinical note has been used for a patient. Once it's been used for a patient, um, it's locked. You can't change it because we need to reference back to it. If you need to update the um, clinical note template, you'd click on the three dots, which is a drop down menu, and you would duplicate the template in order to make changes um, to the to the form to the note itself um, I, I have one that is not in use so we can take a look at that by clicking on it and as we land here um, you can see sections that I already have so there's a text section there's an info section a custom section a soap note section and, and I'm going to take a look at that a bit closer um, as well, I mean, you can watch the demo here on how this form builder, um, how to use this form builder. Um, and then there's a settings section up here. So if I click on the settings, it just has a, an enable and disable, and I can change the name of the form if I want it to. So if I want to get rid of that V2, and maybe I'm going to change that to V3, whatever um, naming convention you have, you can uh, update the name of the form. So I'll just close that. So there's plus, uh, so first of all, let's take a look at these plus buttons that we have here. So I'll go to the bottom one. So if I put a plus, if I click on the plus one here, it will insert whatever um, custom section or widget that I'm going to inject in between these two sections. Um, so that's number one. This is what these plus sums stand for. If I want to remove a section, um, I would just click on the trash can. It will remove all the questions within the section. The uh, little triangles here represent um, expand collapse. So in the info section, so all our clinical uh, note templates come with an info section and you just determine, you just turn on and off the, um, the fields that you want. So three fields that have to be included on every clinical note template would be the service, the date and the practitioner. So these are locked and these are just visible. So if you want these visible or not visible, you would just turn them on and off. So if I didn't want the time of the service, for example, or the duration of the service, I would turn those off. Or if I don't want consent, if it's not something that is needed on the form, I can just turn that off as well and I can collapse this section. So drop downs are represented by three dots. Uh, these represent obviously um, the expand collapse. If I want to swap out these two sections, I just have to click on this arrow in between and it will swap out these two sections. So if I needed to move text all the way to the bottom, I'd move it all the way to the bottom. And again, there's this uh, uh, drop down here and I can delete for example this whole text section if I want and now it's removed and so now it goes one of three so these are the sections that we have within our, our uh, form builder uh, so next what I want to show you is uh, how to add a section and so adding a section is just clicking on the plus symbol and we've already looked at this so you have a few options so you have a custom section which would be this section you can add as many as you want a text area if you want to include uh, large amounts of text on your form you can do that by just clicking this so if I clicked on text I could put any text that I want on this form so I can I can just put you know anything as an example and continue to type and I have some formatting tools as well so let's just collapse that section for a minute and take a look at some of the other uh, selections that we have so we have the custom section so I just click custom section here for example it's going to add another custom section I can change this name so this one was review intake questionnaire and this could literally say um, anything that you um, wanted it could be maybe a goal section that you uh, are setting up um, for your treatment for example so I can save that and now this section will be called goals uh, and then I can add some questions and categories. We'll come back to that in a minute. So let's take a look at some of the other widgets that we have. So these ones here, so the custom sections, you can add as many as you want, as well as the text. 
in terms of the widgets, so we have the snapshot clinic form, snow, uh, soap note, and infection prevention in agreement um, that you can add to it. So you can add them anywhere. So if I want to, for example, again, inject them in here, I have this available. So a snapshot section is a summary section as an example that you might want to include um, on your notes. So it would be visible on your notes. So this is the patient or client summary section uh, that's in their profile. So if you wanted it visible, so if you're tracking um, information, say medications or injuries or surgeries or um, conditions that they have and you want it visible when you're reviewing notes, you would just add that snapshot section and then that widget is visible for that note as an example. Uh, if I can go down to the other widgets, I want to talk about all of them. Clinical forms is, an, is another um, widget that you can add. So it's a Notero widget. And what happens is once they complete a form, um, an intake form, so this is an external form that they would be completing. Once they complete an external form, you can review it directly from the notes. So if that's something that you would want, um, you can also add that to the notes. So I'll just collapse that. Um, and then there's two more widgets we have, an infection prevention, that's for tracking um, anything that you can think of with infection prevention, such as wearing masks or gloves or any protocols. So if that's, again, a section that you want, you would just click on that. And agreements, um, again, if you want agreements visible on the note, an agreement is, is a type of uh, form that you would create that they would have to agree to, such as a cancellation policy. So if you want to show that they've agreed to a cancellation policy and they've agreed to it the day the note was um, uh, created, it will also appear on your notes. And so you would just click on that to add those widgets. So that's how you add sections. And then let's open up a section. We'll, we'll open up uh, already one that's semi-created and we'll expand that. And you can see that I have um, some categories already listed here. So I have location, onset, chronology, so on and so forth. And these are categories and these are numbers so these represent the number of questions in here so if i click on again the expand collapse you can see all the questions so this is the location i'm asking questions specific to an onset of maybe some pain or an injury and they would as i'm interviewing them i would for example just click these boxes that i've added so these are the questions that i've added to the location section and so these are all checkbox because I can see that they're checkbox. At any point, I can inject a question in between by just clicking on this plus. So similar to this plus here, so pluses represent an add. These represent a swap. Just as you can swap a, swap the sections, you can swap the questions as well. So let's click on the plus and I'll just talk about the different types of questions you can add. So we have this is short answer. So I can select a short answer or a, a long answer. Or I can se select a checkbox, which is represented here, and I would put, you know, um, what the checkbox or the question represents. In this case, it would be similar to neck. The next type of question is a, a checkbox with a comment, similar as this checkbox, but when they check it, there's a comment field. A, um, there's a input field that you can put comments in there. Uh, the next type of question is a drop down, and so you'd put the question. Uh, you might uh, put. Um, a you know, question that you ask a question sorry a question type that would have multiple responses so in this case for um, you know the onset of pain um, can you uh, describe one of the selections of your the type of pain you have and you can maybe select uh, your options as uh, excruciating uh, burning and, and then you can select one of the options so it's a select one but it's in a drop down form um, one question, I, uh, another type of question is a multiple choice question. So it's similar to the the drop down, but it, as opposed to being in a drop down menu, uh, the multiple choice selections are exposed on screen for you. You, so you can also have a date question. So I have a, a date in the onset category, for example, and the question could be, you know, when did the pain occur? And then you'd have a, a calendar picker that you can uh, select from. And then the last is a range type question. And this is typically, you put a question in here, um, for this type of form, uh, it doesn't have to be, but it could be uh, what level of pain do you have as an example. And then you can put the range in from zero and this could, this can go all the way up to 10 and you can put the description like uh, no pain and excruciating pain as an example. So you can put a, a number of types of questions in there um, as well. And in, in between, you can put text if you want to. So, um, sorry, 
uh, I didn't select that properly. Um, so in here, if I want to inject in between, I could put a text area as well in between, or I can put another category in between. So you can also inject in between here. Um, in, these are questions, not to inject questions. And this plus here is to inject uh, a category a question or text area as well in between. Okay, so you have a number of options. And just remember when you're hovering over the plus means that you can uh, inject either questions, categories, or text area, depends on what plus. And these are section uh, where you can inject sections in between. Um, if I collapse this as an example, um, instead of expanding collapse, I can just quick click on this name and I can also see it in a slide of the questions that I have. So sometimes it just becomes handier to view it this way when you're just clicking on this to see the questions that you have. And then you can have the same, you know, you can inject questions in between and uh, same with the drop down. You have a drop down for an edit and delete. So again, just remember that the three dots represent a drop down menu and the triangles um, represent or the down arrows represent an expand collapse within the system. So as you're going along and you want to see how your form is uh, rendering or how, how it looks, you can just click on this preview button. And this is not a functional preview. You can check on some of the boxes, but it, it doesn't submit. It doesn't do anything. It's really shown, it's trying to show you the layout of the form. So this is that info panel that we have turned on, for example, the questions that we've added to the form. This is that snapshot section because I've added that widget. Uh, these are the forms to show you that you forms. I mean, if I click on it, nothing happens. So again, it's not functional. And this is a, a soap note section, for example. This is that, that text area. So you can get a, an idea how your form is um, looking and you can make uh, changes as I, as I was showing. You can either delete or move around sections as you see fit. Um, and then there's one other thing I wanna go over with the form builder and that has to do um, with the soap section. And within the soap section, uh, sorry, not snapshot section, but it was a soap section. Within the soap section, there is a, another selection that you have to make, an assessment. So within the platform, we have a complete orthopedic assessment section. And so if you wanted to take advantage of that, you would just click on this button and it would give you um, an orthopedic ass assessment section for evaluation. Um, and it, it is set up regionally, um, including uh, rule outs, range of motion, special tests, neurological, um, postural types of exams so uh, and it's uh, for the whole body so if you want to include that in the soap note section we just turn that on so it's basically in how you would use the form builder itself um, in here there's some drop downs you can delete the form and you can only delete it if it hasn't been in use here and if I go back to the templates um, I just want to just go over a few things um, also within um, this drop down so the drop down has the ability to edit uh, to preview the form from here duplicate disable and delete as well um, if i have any forms that i have or sorry any notes that i have disabled um, i can just hit show uh, disable clinical notes i don't have any and if i did i can enable them again so you have that ability and once you have your clinical note it's just uh, quickly you can add them to a patient or client profile. And I will just um, quickly show some of the functions um, on how to add them. So if I go to the calendar, for example, and I hover over um, Keith, jo um, sorry, if I hover over, yeah, Keith Jones, you can see that there's already a clinical note uh, added. It's in draft form and I can click on that um, to view the note or go and make some edits to the note. In this one here, it's also in draft form. If I add, I'll add a patient here. So I'll add Keith back in here and show you what the selections are. So I'll add Keith back in here. I'll book an appointment for him. And if I go to Keith, I have a few options. Those templates at the practitioner level, so each practitioner, so if I create it, so in my clinic, I had three um, clinical note templates, I can add, um, I can select one as a default. And so if I click this add default, whatever one I selected, it'll create that type of note. I can also click the drop down here and you can see my initial appointment was the default, or I can select any template that you've created. So if this is an initial visit and you have an initial appointment, you might want to use that one, or you can duplicate from a previous note that uses a previous template. So any notes that have been finalized, you can also click on here. You can also um, 
add a note directly from their profile. So if I go to Keith Jones and I go into the clinical note section by just clicking in the sidebar clinical note, I have the similar type of selections. I can add a default note or again, I can add uh, the uh, one from a template itself. So I can select one of my uh, other templates. Uh, on this page, um, there's there's um, some things that we're trying to expose here. Um, this is accessibility. So this is a feature that you can have your notes only accessible by Prax or by the author. These are follow-up emails that you would have sent if the clinical note is associated to an invoice. So if I would have created an invoice as well, uh, and there, there's an appointment. Um, down here, a similar type of uh, buttons with the exception, I can, once a note has been finalized, so these are all finalized, I can also duplicate from here uh, that note, and so we create a new note. So this is the number of ways that you can create notes, so you have a duplicate function, or you have these functions at the top here. And again, in the drop downs, we have uh, some other functions that you can do. So you can send a follow-up, as an example, you can send a follow-up email from the appointment. If we just go into here very quickly, um, so this was the one that was created from the appointment. If I click on this as an example and we go, oh, um, I've selected the wrong template. Don't worry, you can always swap it out. You can just click on the three dots and I can change the note template. By clicking on change note template, uh, we're just giving you a heads up that if you put it, any data in here, it's not going to be transferred over if you swap out your clinical note template. So again, if you make a mistake on your selection, you can always swap out that uh, the note template. And the last thing I do want to show you is to set that default. So if I click on my initials, I switch over to the practitioner role. And once I'm in the practitioner role, I will click on charting. And I can set my uh, clinical note default. So if one practitioner uses, so if you are in a multi-practitioner clinic and you have maybe a, a few different types of templates, some for maybe chiros or physios or massage or whatever the clinic is, um, you can select which one that you use most often. So it's handy in, uh, to select a, a default clinical net template and that's at the practitioner. So the practitioners will set the default. So that's it for um, clinical note templates and um, give you a, a, a brief overview of how you'd use them um, and how you'd create them. So thank you for watching and please click subscribe if you would like to be notified as new videos are released.